Hey everyone and welcome to this video covering leads, opportunities, and quotes in Dynamics 365 Project Service Automation. So leads, opportunities, and quotes usually start a sales process in a company. And if you've used Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement Sales App, you've probably worked with leads, uh, opportunities, and quotes before. And, and in Project Service Automation, those three different features aren't really that too different from the sales application. So let's hop in the system and see how kind of the beginning of the sales process in project service automation works in the context of leads, opportunities, and quotes. So I'm here in the system and I've pre-populated some fields for the sake of brevity. One important thing to to notice on the lead form is the type of lead. So when we have an item-based lead, what happens is when we qualify this, a standard uh, Dynamics 365 customer engagement lead will be created. Now, if we want to create a project service-based lead, we have to select work-based. And also, if we're talking about field service, um, we want a field service based lead, then we would naturally choose service maintenance based. So let's select work based and pretty much all the other fields that are here have already been populated. We have a company, we have an address and we have a topic as well as a name for the lead. So let's save this. And then let's qualify this lead. Now, as we have a company defined, we'll always we'll also get an account for this lead. All right, so the lead's qualified and it turns into an opportunity. And we can just check that the account's been created as well. Here we go. All right, so let's hop back to the opportunity form. All right, so when we selected work-based, the, the lead, the qualified lead automatically created a project information form for an opportunity. Now, this is a project service automation-based opportunity. As we can see here on the order type, it says work-based. Now, if for some reason we want to switch forms and switch to the regular out of the box opportunity form used by the sales app application, we can do that just by selecting the form from the top navigation and selecting opportunity. But as you can see, it bounces back to the project information form because the order type is set as work based. Now, if we want to switch forms, we would have to change this order type back to item based. And this field isn't necessarily visible out of the box, so you might have to you might have to put this on the form and and make it visible, but it is definitely an out of the box field in Dynamics 365. So another thing worth looking at is the contracting unit. When we're talking about project service automation, we always need a contracting unit for the opportunity form. And what happened here is a default uh, contracting unit, which is an organizational unit that I've created, was automatically populated to this field. Another fields that are on the on the opportunity entity are also the product price list. Now, if I want to sell products, then I would choose a product price list right here. And as you can see, it's defaulted to my uh, project-based price list. So I want to change this and choose a product price list that has some products on it. All right, pretty much the other fields are standard, standard fields that you might be familiar with from the Dynamics 365 sales application. So we're not going to look at those in more detail. But when we scroll down, 
will come to opportunity lines. And as you can see, we have project based lines as well as product based lines. Now, for the purpose of the purpose of this video is to focus on PSA. So what we'll do is we'll create a product a, a project based line as an example. So let's give her just a sec to load. And sometimes it might default to product type product. So just we'll just select project based service from the option set. We can set a customer budget and set that at 10,000 and the billing method is time and material. There's not a lot of other information that can be filled. And actually what the purpose of the, the, the project baselines is that when we fill these and then create a quote, the quote will have the lines that we have just created on it. Now, we can leave those lines blank. We can leave the project base lines blank and not fill them up. And then just when we build a quote, we can just fill those lines on the quote as we go. So there's really two different kinds of approaches to this. All right, so now that we've pretty much filled everything on the opportunity form, the next is building a quote. So let's click on add quote record. And a pop-up window will appear with the basic information for a project quote. Now again, this is important. When you're making a quote off of a project information form, you will get a project information quote form. Now, if this doesn't for some reason happen, you have to be careful and, and, and look at the form type and be sure to select project information if you want to select a quote that's used with project service automation. And that's because when you close this quote as one, this quote will actually turn into a project contract. And that project contract will be then used kind of as a, a kind of as a backbone for, for everything that you do financially. And you'll eventually tie your projects to the project contract that's that's formed based off of based off of this quote. All right, so let's, as we can see, the billing address is, uh, is automatically carried through. We have our potential customer, our contracting unit, our opportunity, our product price list, et cetera, already pre-populated on the form. And here we have that project baseline that we filled on the opportunity we can see that on the quote right here. So if we double click on this line, we can add some additional details on the quote. So let's make this a time and material that includes time and expense. Oh, we'll actually leave the project blank here. We could, if, if we know a project that we're, we're actually doing, then we could add a project to this lookup right here or or even create a new project and then add it here. But it's not really necessary at this point in time. And I think a lot of times when you're in kind of in the quoting phase of your sales cycle uh, or, or of your sales process, you might not actually know what the project is that, that will be kind of pinpointed for the quote. So let's add a single quote line detail uh, on the quote as an example. So let's call this consultant work, transaction class of time, role of consultant, and let's make the quantity at 10 hours. So when I qualified, the lead and, a, and the account was created, 
I didn't actually go on the account and assign a project based price list for that specific for that specific account. So the price list that PSA is using is actually the, the default project based price list that's defined under parameters. And price list is is something that I'm I've covered in a different video, sir. So we're not diving too deep into that. But it's good to know that if you if you didn't define a customer specific price list for the account. Now that you're making a quote, the prices come from the default price list. And that's why that that's what the prices that we can see here are based off of. All right, so we have everything else here that we need. Um, we could set up invoice schedules already if we know those, but they're really not, I think, in, in you know, in, in kind of in a quote phase, I don't think those are necessarily required. So we ha have our quote line all set and the quote is all set. So I already closed out of, there, out of there. And as we can see, the quote appears right here on the opportunity. So let's actually make another quote as well. And then let's see what happens when I close one of these quotes as one. So if you're making several quotes towards one opportunity, it's a good idea to to rename the other quotes because otherwise you're kind of you're going to be you might be lost with with what quote is actually which quote is actually which. All right, so everything's pretty much um, set up. So let's close this second quote as one. And it automatically turns into a project contract. We can just ignore the project contract for now and close out of it. And now when we come back to the quote and let's refresh this, I'm uh, sorry, the opportunity and let's refresh this opportunity record. When we come back to this opportunity, we can see that when we closed a quote as one, the other quote was actually closed automatically. Now, if for some reason we have several quotes and we have two, for example, two quotes that have been won towards one single opportunity, we could just click here and make another quote and I'll demonstrate this so it's easier to to comprehend we can just create another quote and close that as one as well to have two one quotes on the opportunity let's name this quote three and let's close it as one As you can see, we have that original quote that we won. We have that closed quote. And now we have that third quote that's won as well. So if in your sales process, you might have two one quotes towards a single opportunity, it is possible. Simply create another quote after, after you've closed the first one as one. All right. So so far what we've done is we've created and qualified a lead we have run through the opportunity we've added a quote uh, actually uh, three quotes on the uh, on a single opportunity we've converted those quotes to project contracts and now moving forward next thing next thing that would would actually happen is is 
plan our project work. So we would attach a project or several projects towards those project contracts that we've just made. And then we would resource those projects and submit times and expenses and eventually invoice those, those uh, projects to kind of end our sales and our project process. So I hope this quick video has, you know, kind of given you a bit of insight as to how to use quotes and leads and quotes, leads and opportunities and quotes in Dynamics 365 project service automation. I wish you a good day and have a good one.